Okay, so this is a Thunderbolt Solar um, 500 watt charge controller. Item 68738 out of uh, Harbor Freight, part of their Thunderbolt Solar line. I, uh, I'm going to be splicing these videos together as I show the comparison with the uh, NetMeter Solar LCD30. And it turns out these are pretty different. The controls are in the same place. The battery hookups are in the same place. I obviously don't have it hooked up to any solar panels right now. I do have it hooked up to a battery system so that we can see how the display works here. Unlike the Steca or the NetMeter Solar LCD30, the Thunderbolt Solar unit here only runs on 12 volt. There is no 24 volt option. So the button here still does the same thing. That's going to turn off your load, your light here. Um, not sure if it's positive ground or negative ground from the stand, standpoint of which one has a switch, but positive here, negative here, negative here, positive here. It's the same setup with a couple of different other load centers. So yeah, that's not bad. If you learn one, you kind of learn them all. The, the buttons all do the same thing. The LCD readout does the same thing, but it's definitely not the same LCD readout. Readout here, we've got a battery symbol telling us the voltage. Very straightforward. We press the button here. Here, when you have the little arrow, and the sunlight to the arrow to that, 0, 0.0 amps, because that's basically telling us that there's no amperage going into the battery from the solar. That's because it's not hooked up. Now, this unit's not going to be able to tell the difference between it being dark out or the solar panels not being hooked up. The, um, the other thing, it seems like we've got to get a little forceful with the buttons. This would, of course, tell us what the amperage is going out of the battery into, let's say, lights. But since there's nothing hooked up, it's not, it's not going to tell us. The reason you would have a readout like that is because you want to be able to have an idea of what's going on, whether your uh, input power flow is larger or smaller than your output power flow. So you can decide whether items need to be left on or left off to maintain the voltage that you want to maintain. Here we see this unit's maintaining a 12.6 volts. That's just the battery sitting there. Considering that I charged it up earlier, it gets a little bit uh, uh, dangerous to consider that a float voltage because these units are going to call float voltage at 14.4. But again, that's when it shuts things off. So there's not a lot of information this thing's going to tell you. It's just basically the incoming and outgoing amps and then the master voltage of the system. What it's not going to do that the net meter solar unit does is have that little bar graph that tells you the uh, uh, percentage of battery power that you have. Uh, the owner's manual, very brief, not a lot to it. Um, it doesn't have the error codes, there's a lot of stuff that's not in here. One of the things that kind of, um, you know, brought me to question part of what's going on here in the owner's manual is that it talks about the battery voltage, that this is a 12 volt unit only, output current to load 18 amps in, in, in solar charge current to 18 amps. Well, 18 amps is a hell of a lot less than 500 watts at 12 volts, which means that realistically, I got a feeling that this is more like a, uh, a 300 watt charge controller, not a 500 watt. I, I don't know exactly, you know, how they want to deal with that, but you know, when you, I see 18 amps in parentheses all over here, I don't think I'd want to be trying to pump 500 watts of uh, panel power through this thing. Now, the Harbor Freight panels are such low-powered panels that maybe they're thinking that this is the top dog for their stuff. Um, and you would be talking about a lot of Harbor Freight panels before you're getting to 18 amps. So... On this, you know, given that the retail price on these is around $80, your coupon pricing rarely gets below $60 with these. Um, you got to look out for a little bit of what's going on with what you're getting for the money. I think it's not bad because the uh, Harbor Freight stores do offer, you know, relatively decent warranty support. The thing's obviously easy to figure out. 
but you still got to consider this to be an entry-level charge controller for a solar power system and even though they call it a 500 watt charge controller if they're limiting at 18 amps I don't think you really want to put more than 300 through it um, if you're using like the DM solar panels uh, two of the 140 250 watt panels that's about it and again this is 12 volt only don't run this as a 24 volt system overall I would say is it a wonderful charge controller no but it's probably worth the money especially if you're making that transition from small-scale hobby solar power to something that you're actually going to try and use a little more seriously but if you're doing a, the RV or the small off-grid micro home with this and you're actually going to be out in remote areas away from the not just the power grid but the economic grid have a spare buy a spare have it in a box this isn't high-end equipment it's prone to fail people that I know that have done the uh, solar power off-grid stuff over in remote parts of Africa they were running into the same things panels practically bulletproof but the weak link and usually that stuff is going to be those Chinese made charge charge controllers when you're talking about charge controllers that are comfortably under a hundred bucks maybe it's not such a bad way to go I just kind of think that by and large there's a few better deals for the performance out there but you know it's not a bad one 